What's up guys, I'm Ari Rochelle and this is Not For The Week Of Heart. In America today, there has been a shift in the atmosphere. More and more Americans are becoming patriots and putting up American flags on their homes and in their yards. While some see this as a good thing, others condemn it and claim that it's wrong, especially for Christians. So then that begs the question, can Christians be patriots? Well, if we search through the entire Bible, we will never find the word patriot. The term patriot just isn't in the Bible at all. But I think before we go any further, we need to define patriot. According to the Merriam-Webster Dictionary, a patriot is defined as one who loves and supports his or her country. So if the definition of patriot is loving and supporting one's country, then one could argue that God is the biggest patriot of them all. When God divided the earth, he said that he kept the nation of Israel for himself. Deuteronomy chapter 32 verses 8 through 9. When the Most High divided to the nations their inheritance, when he separated the sons of Adam, he set the bounds of the people according to the number of the children of Israel. For the Lord's portion is his people, Jacob is the lot of his inheritance. Now, someone will say that that doesn't answer the question. I'd say, you're right. It doesn't answer the question because we're building a foundation first. This may not answer the overall question, but it does show that God is patriotic towards Israel. Here's another verse that shows this. Let's take a quick look at Psalms 147 verses 19 through 20. He declares his word to Jacob, his statutes and rules to Israel. He has not dealt thus with any other nation. They do not know his rules. Praise the Lord. According to the psalmist, God didn't have a relationship with any other nation the way he did with Israel. He gave his law and his statutes only to Israel. We're even told to pray for the peace of Jerusalem in Psalms 122 verse 6. These aren't the only times that God claims Israel as his possession either. The church, the bride of Christ, is even described as the new Jerusalem in Revelation chapter 21 verses 9 through 27. If this isn't love and support for a country, I don't know what is. Now some will say, well, that's God. We're not God. Neither is America Israel. Well, fair enough, but if we go back to our definition of patriot, it simply means to love and support your country. So the question then is, should Christians love and support their country? I think the simple answer is yes. Every Christian should love and support their country. Not just because God loves and supports Israel, but because how can we pray for a nation that you don't love and support? 1 Timothy chapter 2, verses 1-2 through two. First of all, then I urge that supplications, prayers, intercessions, and thanksgivings be made for all people, for kings and all who are in high positions, that we may lead a peaceful and quiet life, godly and dignified in every way. We are told to pray for and make thanksgiving for kings and all who are in high positions so that we might be able to live a peaceful and godly life. This can't be just about Israel. This has to be about the nation in which the Christian is living their life because just praying for Israel is not going to affect your leaders over the nation that you are in. It's just not. Look what God said to the people of Israel during the reign of King Solomon. 2 Chronicles chapter 7, verses 13-14 through 14. When I shut up the heavens so that there is no rain or command the locusts to devour the land or send pestilence among my people, if my people who are called by my name humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven and will forgive their sins and heal their land. This is the Lord telling King Solomon how to bring the favor of the Lord back to Israel, back on his nation, back on his people. How can we pray for restoration of a land that we don't love? Now, some will still say that this verse and all the other verses are all about Israel, except for arguably 1 Timothy chapter 2, verses 1-2. through 2. Sure, they were all directed to Israel in the time that they were spoken and written, but they aren't only for Israel. For all scripture is breathed out by God and profitable for teaching, for reproof, for correction, and for training in righteousness, that the man of God may be complete, equipped for every 
good work. 2 Timothy chapter 3, verses 16-17 through 17. All scripture is profitable for teaching, reproof, correction, and training in righteousness. If we have to omit those scriptures because God was specifically talking to Israel at the time it was spoken, then we have to omit all other scriptures including Jeremiah 29, 11, Psalms 23, Isaiah 44, 2, Psalms 139, 14, and so on and so forth. Do you see the slippery slope that this trail of thinking leads to? So with that in mind, let's keep going. Even in the very beginning, mankind was never meant to live in one area, but to fill the entire earth. Genesis chapter 1 verse 28, and God blessed them and said to them, be fruitful and multiply and fill the earth and subdue it and have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the birds of the heavens and over every living thing that moves on the earth. When we refused to do this command and stayed in one spot trying to make a name for ourselves on the earth, God dispersed us himself. Genesis chapter 11 verses 8 through 9. So the Lord dispersed them from there over the face of all the earth and they left off building the city. Therefore its name was called Babel because there the Lord confused the language of all the earth and from there the Lord dispersed them over the face of all the earth. We aren't all supposed to abide in Israel. We are supposed to spread out and fill the whole earth. We're supposed to subdue the earth and work it. We're supposed to take care of it. How can we disperse over the whole earth and subdue it and take care of it if we aren't allowed to love the land in which we live? It just doesn't work. So just to sum everything up for you guys real quick, the word patriot simply means to love and support the country in which you live. There's no weird conspiracy behind it. It's simply love and support of one's country. Christians shouldn't only be patriots because they were born in a nation or they migrated to a nation, but we're called to be patriots because we have to love and support our country in order to pray for our country and subdue the earth. We should be proud of the nation in which we live. And we should love the nation in which we live. And we should pray that that nation holds to the standards that God has set. But that love that we have for a nation should never be over the love that we have for our God. We should never be a patriot over being a Christian because one day this earth will be no more. Literally, this earth will flee from the presence of God according to Revelation chapter 20 verse 11. But our souls will never die. Therefore, love your country, but love your God more. Don't allow patriotism or the love of your country to replace the love of your God. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. And if you did, please feel free to like, comment, share, and subscribe to our channel. And until next time, God bless.